So you're ready to build a drone, but you don't know what to pick. So there are tons of videos out there if you want to build the cheapest budget drone that you possibly can. But for those people that are already experienced doing RC hobbies or just have a little more money and don't want to buy the cheapest crap that's going to break on you, there's really not a lot of out there. Um, of information out there and I constantly see these questions posted up on all the forums all the Facebook groups and so since I may not be that good of a racer but I am a fairly decent builder and I've also worked in IT for the past uh, quite a few years um, so I kind of tend to go into like support mode and just start rattling off suggestions in fact a lot of us do but there's a lot of information out there that is very specific to certain people's preferences and setups. So this is why I'm going to talk about the two things that are not the cheapest, but about the easiest to build and are going to offer you a lot of performance and can be used for both racing or freestyle or just getting out there and learning and having something that's a little more future proof that can grow with you. These setups can move with you from frame to frame if you install them right and add your capacitors um, as you always should to offer a little bit more protection. Um, so let's get into both of these stacks. Now, first I'm gonna show you um, my personal setup that I run, and this is a Hyperlite Floss 2 from Filer um, Pyroflip, and it's running the Emax Magnum stack. Now, it's also running the ZMX FinX 23 motors. These are 2205.5, 2600 kV. Um, very nice and shiny, except for the fact that I've gotten them pretty muddy lately. Now, the other interesting thing about this particular build is, is I have installed the brand new Runcam Eagle Micro. Now you can see the top plate would be at the top of this standoff. So not only does this lens protrude a good bit out past the front standoffs, it's also going to stand up past the top of the top plate. And if you run your battery on the bottom, like I do, um, this is actually a Kevlar strap, very strong. Um, you have to worry about this camera lens um, from the front and the top. So I'm not sure what to think about that. Um, I've only ran it once. I'm not sure if I'll race with this setup just because I'm really afraid of smashing that camera lens. Um, but let's talk about the Emax Magnum for a second. That's it. This is how it comes. Guys, look how easy this is. It is three stacks. Your 4 one ESC right here, your flight controller right here, your video transmitter that's already installed. Now, I put a little hot glue right here on the UFL connector, and I've also secured it both on the rear standoff and on the rear arm. I like to use the Luminaire Axi antenna. This thing is great, but make sure you have protection at this connector because this is a weak point. Um, but as long as you do this, I learned this tip from Ferrari and it's worked great for me. This is the FR Sky XM Plus receiver that it actually comes with it. And now, I don't know if you can see this, but it actually just sits on these pins, boom. So you really only have to solder your motors, your power leads, which comes with this. It even comes with the heat shrink that's installed right here. Always secure your power lead very tightly. This is a, a large size zip tie that I have right here. So it won't put any pressure on, on these pads right here. Uh, and then you have three wires for your camera. And that is it. This is the easiest build in all of FPV in my opinion. Now I have used those Racer Star all-in-one. It's the same board as if you have seen the Sunrise or the Cicada. Um, basically the Asgard is a very similar thing as well. Those are kind of cool but it's everything in one and you still have to figure out where you're going to mount your VTX, where you're going to mount your receiver. And in small builds like this, um, there aren't a ton of options. So I really like that this takes all the guessing work away from you. Look how thin that stack is. These standoffs are not super tall, but it sits well beneath them. There's tons of room in there. And there's lots of room away from the front. 
Now, as you can see, if you're questioning uh, the eagle mounting position, you do notice I have it up high. And that's because if you have it sitting down lower, you can't get this type of camera tilt, which I like to run about 45 to 50 degrees camera tilt. I don't have Dolma tilt uh, quite yet, but um, that's about what I like to run. So your wires go in here. Now, one thing that I notice about a lot of the 4-in-1 ESC options out there is there's two schools of thought in doing this. Having the motor pads on the sides and having the motor pads on the ends. I prefer this immensely. Having them on the sides means that you're much more prone to knock a solder wire off during a crash. This is protected in the stack between the standoffs. It's not going anywhere. I always leave a little bit of extra length right here in case I ever have to do anything. Just put some, uh, some electrical tape right there at the front, right there at the back. Now, let's talk about the hobby wing. Now here, now I actually have two setups like the one I just showed you. This one is the Hobby Wing stack. This is the Pyroflip 2205 Team Editions. They're 2522 KV. Um, and this is the Fox Ear Predator camera. I love this camera. Um, it The image is not quite as good as that Eagle, but it, the, and the lens is slightly larger than than the run cam, but not nearly, um, than the regular run cam Swift, but not nearly as big as the Eagle. Um, it sits, it, it sits uh, much farther. I could actually lower this so that it, the top plate doesn't have any danger of damaging this camera. Um, you are going to have a little bit sticking out at the front. Um, these, um, 3D printed connectors right here. There's actually a newer one, the newer type um, it actually looks like this. So if you buy this frame or, or really any power flip frame, you're going to get this. I like this a little bit better, but I just had this one um, from before. Now let's talk about the hobby wing. The hobby wing, um, you can buy it, um, in two different boxes or you can buy it like this, or you can buy it in the, the one pack. The one pack, you actually save a couple bucks. So get that if you can. It wasn't available when I was ordering, so I ordered the twofer. And those two pieces are the 4-in-1 40 amp ESC. The Emax Magnum is only a 30 amp. This is 40 amp. So much power. Um, now, it's really overkill for some 2205 efficient motors like this. Um, I'll probably change these motors out eventually, but I, I really do like these a lot. Then it has the F4 flight controller right here. Now, when I built this, um, the... The Hobby Wing VTX did not exist. So this is actually the Maytek um, Pyroflip VTX right here. The UFL is on the bottom right there, um, which is a little harder to work with. But again, I have it secured here and here, so it won't get any yanks on it. This VTX is really nice. Uh, it's really easy to work with. And I have just a little zip tie securing the XM Plus FrySky receiver right there. And that's pretty much it. So this is a little bit more work. There's a little, a few extra wires involved. Now, if you use the Hobby Wing um, VTX, um, that would be eliminated. Now, the, the cost of these, the Emax Magnum is about $110 and that comes with everything. All you have to add is your camera and your motors and that's it. Boom. Now, the Hobby Wing's a little bit more. It's 95 for this configuration that I have here, which is just the ESC and the flight controller. Um, I believe it's another 30 if you wanna add the VTX. Um, but at that point, you're already talking about $125 and then you still gotta have your receiver. So that is the more expensive option, but this thing is bulletproof. A lot of racers run this. Um, Domo from Pyroflip was running that for a while. I I'm not sure if he still is. Uh, he moves equipment quite frequently, but this is a good option for racing or freestyle. You can run large motors. So my general rule of thumb is, um, if you're running 2206 motors or smaller, go with the Emax Magnum because it's a little bit cheaper. But if you're gonna run the really big dog motors, 2207, 2306, 2405, or anything of that nature, um, go for the extra security. Get this thing right here. Now, 
there is a cap that comes with the board that is installed right here underneath the arm. There's also a cap that I have um, on this build. Uh, actually, it looks like it fell off. Okay, so always double check your caps. I'm missing my cap on here, which is really bad. So I'm going to install a new one. But when I do run the caps on these builds for the Emax Magnum, I kind of attach them to this back um, standoff right here. I didn't even notice that I was missing it. Um, so, and it, and it goes to those power leads right there. So, anyway, those are the main differences between these two setups. This can be used for freestyle, racing, just learning. And these are setups that can really grow with you. So, if you want to know what to get, get one of these. It can be really daunting the type of custom configurations that a lot of people run and they use this ESC, this flight controller, Crossfire, all that stuff. It gets really complicated. There's so many options out there. Everything's changing so fast. So you have to really deal with people that have their old favorite things that are kind of out of date and the new favorite things. This is something that I think is going to be okay for a while. It's an F4 board. They both have OSD built in, which is really important these days. I love the Betaflight OSD. It's great. Um, and they're both easy to build. So I can build that Emacs Magnum um, in about three hours. And that includes putting together the frame and everything. And I'm not a very fast builder. Somebody that's faster could probably do it in two. Um, this might take um, probably an extra 45 minutes. Um, because everything's separate, um, but it's still not bad at all. Individual SCs are, are basically gone. They're in the past. Leave them alone. Unless you're doing some crazy success or whatever, like there's no reason for it. I have no issues with ESCs busting. Um, and I think that part of the reason why you're in so much danger with those ESCs is because they're out there on the arms where props and crashes can affect them. When they're in the center stack, they're much more protected. Now, some people don't like to use these pinned setups, um, but it does have the connector. So you can run connector from here to here, and that's all you have to do. Um, so... When you're going to select your build components, go with one of these. Make it easy for yourself.